Okay, we are getting ready to go pick up some chicks. So I thought I would walk you through getting a brooder set up um, for your chicks. We followed this process for our meat birds. Last year, we've never done egg laying chickens from chicks. We bought ours as 16 week old pullets last year, but this is really applicable and can be scaled to most sizes of poultry. Step number one is the box. What are you using as your brooder box? And I recommend work with something you have. This is something that can also grow over time. Maybe you start the chicks out in something smaller as you're getting a more scalable solution. I use a deck box that I got off of a discount um, bidding site and we used this for our 30 um, meat birds last summer. We did two rounds of those and it was pretty good, but work with what you have. When they're chicks, you don't have to worry about them getting out, um, but once they're a little bit bigger, you'll wanna have something like a screen over it to make sure that they're not jumping out. Right, after the box, you wanna do bedding. We use pine shavings and this is our kind of chicken station that we use for our egg laying hens too. And I do have a bag of the fine shavings open. I've seen some people recommend, um, I've seen some people recommend to use, um, to not to use fine shavings because the chicks might eat them. So we already had a bag of these kind of more flakier ones. Here, I'll show you what they look like. Not sure if you can see that. They're kind of like bigger, bigger chunks. So we're gonna use these in the brooder for the for the chicks. Okay, so we're just gonna set these aside. We'll continue to replenish them as we're cleaning out the brooder box. Next up is the heat source. This is really important. You know, a lot of people use a heat lamp. That's not something that we use. Um, this is I think they call it maybe like a brooder plate and it's worked out really well for us. It has these legs, um, has these legs that have three different levels. So it kind of grows with the chick. Um, you want to make sure that the bird has enough room to get under it to get warmth, but that it's not too hot or too low. So, so because we're getting day old chicks, we are going to start it on the bottom level. The other cool thing about this piece of equipment has two heat settings. One is a brooder, that's our use case today. But there's also one that's a heater. And these legs, you can use two of them and per perch them upright and use them as a heater um, in your coop. So it's kind of one of those things that is useful and grows with the bird. Now when we had guineas, I don't think, they were so big when we got them, um, just cause they're a bigger bird. I don't think we were ever on this bottom level. So we're going to get this plugged in on the brooder heat setting. It's kind of like an oven. You don't put your recipe, whatever you have going on in a cold oven. We want this to heat up and be warm and have optimal conditions before we put the birds in. Next up is the water. Now, as you can see, our space is pretty small. so. We're going to be using a smaller waterer. If you have a bigger brooder or maybe more birds, you can use a bigger waterer like this. We need a guinea break, I think. So it truly isn't one size fits all. Um, you know, use what you have as well as what works for your situation, the number or kind of birds that you have. It's funny, when we bought this last year, when we had the guinea keep, it's really helpful to have a small waterer when they're so little. Um, but it works with a regular mouth jar. And that was before I was into canning. We literally had to scrounge around to find a jar. Now we are definitely um, rich in jars. There's a lot of where these come from. Okay, so we filled this jar up with water and this lid, you have to get the threading light right, but the lid just twists on. So this is a really good solution from what, for when they're small or when you just have a small space. Okay, and last but not least, the feeder. The feeder is, this is the same setup, it has these little holes so they can eat in it, but we'll fill this with feed, um, and it just is a regular mouth jar. We only have feed for our laying hens right now, and they require different types of feed as they're kind of going through their growth, growth cycle. They need more protein when they're chicks, so we're gonna pick that up while we're out getting, um, getting them, but the only thing we'll have to do once we get home is fill up this feed jar.
Another type of feeder you can use, and we use this when we have more birds, when we're doing our broilers, getting 30 at a time. Um, this is kind of the same kind of setup. It keeps things neat for the chicks. They can't get food everywhere, um, but also accessible. It's very low to the ground. So this is if you have um, a larger flock that you're getting started. Now, just one more thing I wanted to show you that we're not going to be using today. I had mentioned you know, having a screen once they're a little bit bigger so they can't jump out. It's kind of an in-between phase when they're starting to outgrow the brooder, but too young to go out in the coop with the rest of the flock. We <laughs> repurposed a door from an old coop that we had to get started. We just bought a coop off of Facebook Marketplace, one of those pre-assembled one, and this door works magic. So we just end up putting it over the brooder box. Okay, so here is our final product. Um, we have the feeder in here that needs filled up with feed. Uh, we have the water in here, and we also have our heat source. So basically your checklist for getting your brooder set up is your structure. What is your brooder box? We're just using a deck box that we got on discount. You need a feeder, a water, a heat source, and some sort of bedding. We used the flake style pine shaving. So good luck with your flock can't wait to hear all about it but don't overcomplicate what you're using as a brooder use what you have use value items um, obviously take into consideration the health of the chicken but this isn't a perfect science you can be creative and raise a healthy flock so i can't wait to see um, how your brooders turn out your countdown to your first egg is on i'm so excited for you we'll see you back next time